Destiny helpers and destiny killers. Who are they and what is their assignment in and around your life? Now, I don't, um, I have not touched on this question that much, but it's come up a lot. So where that the messages are getting saturated about destiny killers, destiny killers, destiny killers. Okay, let's unpack this for some time and I'll give you kind of like a strategy on how to address um, taking back your destiny if it has been stolen by destiny killers and destroyers, okay? So I'm going to give you a story first. And this story is going to help you understand how you can see this in a dream, okay? So there was this uh, 12-year-old girl who had a dream. Well, her mother gets a phone call. Her mother gets a phone call that the, the, the daughter's aunt had died, paternal aunt. The daughter's aunt had died, paternal aunt. And the daughter just like she the mother tells the daughter, hey, your aunt has passed. Would you like to go to the funeral? You know, this happened, this happened. And the daughter is like, OK, I don't want to go to the funeral. I never had a good relationship with her. Like she didn't really like me. And the tricky thing here is that the mother and the father never truly understood why the child didn't like their their paternal aunt. But the daughter was always telling them she is, she puts up a facade around when you guys are around. But if I'm by, with her by myself, she is very mean. She's condescending. She's demeaning. She belittles me and she compares me to my cousins, right? And so the daughter had has always seen through these aunt's um, masks. Like she'd always seen this from a very young age. And so she never liked her. So when she heard the news of, the passing of the aunt, she was just kind of like nonchalantly indifferent. She was indifferent about it and said, "Well, I don't want to go. To, I don't want to go to the burial. I really don't care." And the mom was kind of like wondering, like, "Why you always? Why have you always been like this towards this woman?" She's like, "She never liked me. She's always mean to me, belittled me, and always compared me to her daughters." And so <clears throat> that night, the girl, the twelve-year-old girl, has a dream, and in this dream. She sees fresh, fresh soil. You know how you see a place where somebody has just freshly dug? So she's looking at this freshly dug soil and she's instructed to dig up, like start digging in that spot. Starts to like use her fingers to claw at those spots and take and realizes with that particular area has everything that belongs to her. She takes out a chest, like a big treasure chest, and everything that's inside, she knows it's her. She's aware in the dream that this is mine. So she goes, oh, that's mine, puts it aside. Finds gold, oh, that's mine, puts it aside. Finds her dresses, oh, that's mine, puts them aside. So she basically, she, she spends the entire time in the dream digging up her belongings, and she's aware on who had put them in that spot. It took the death of that aunt for this child, this 12-year-old girl, to be able to retrieve her things that the aunt had taken and buried, okay? And we can see that as a destiny destroyer, a destiny killer. The aunt saw the girl was not her daughter, so she decided to, to bury her dressers, like her mantles, like your dress, the way that what you put on the spiritual realm, that is your mantle, that is your calling, right? What gives you access? What gives you authority in the spiritual realm? Her gold, that is the, in the, the Bible talks about God giving you resources, God portioning out resources for every single person. That is the treasures that God has given this particular girl. Like in, the, in your lifetime, you're going to have these treasures. You're going to have this um, allotted kingdom money resources and so she's taking all these things out that belong to her but that had been buried by the aunt now the girl does not tell her parents this because her parents never believed her but in the dream after she wakes up she's very happy and she's like wow i was able to retrieve my belongings i knew that woman was a wicked wicked woman i did i just didn't know how to what extent she was that wicked right so that's a destiny destroyer a destiny killer right and even though the girl was 12, didn't really understand spiritual things, she w when she woke up, God was able to aid her in understanding that the, the death of that woman brought about your retrieving what belonged to you that she had buried away from you. Now, the Bible says that in the book of Ecclesiastes, 
I believe nine six. It says that the the hold on one second. Let me all right, let's read the scripture. So Ecclesiastes nine five to six says this for the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing, and they no longer have a reward here, for the memory of them is forgotten. Verse six is a focal point. Indeed, their love, their hatred, and their zeal have already perished, and they will no longer have a share in this age in anything that is done under the sun so the hatred dies their um their love dies whatever they had going on it dies so when this aunt died this girl was able to retrieve what had belonged to her but had been buried by that wicked wicked aunt okay now uh, another example i can give you actually and this is biblical i'll give you the biblical example it's in the book of matthew chapter 2 King Herod heard about Jesus Christ being the king coming. He was disturbed and the entire Jerusalem with him. So imagine the city of Jerusalem disturbed about the the birth of Jesus and King Herod himself being disturbed. So King Herod calls the Magi and says, hey, tell me where, oh no, he calls the prophets and the and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and ask them, where should, where is the Messiah to be born? And they tell him. And so he asks, well, let me read verse 7 of Matthew 2. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so I too may go and worship him. So in this Matthew chapter 2, there are two parties. There are the destiny helpers, the magi from the east that were actually studying the stars. So they were astrologers. And there is King Herod, who was the destiny killer. King Herod's idea was to kill Jesus because he felt like his throne was threatened. Okay, so he tells them, listen, go and search for this baby. Let me know where he is and I too will go and worship him. The Magi get there, they worship Jesus, they bow down and they, they give him treasures from the treasure box. They give him frankincense, gold and myrrh. Destiny helpers. Destiny helpers will give you... Um, resources that are going to help you fulfill your kingdom assignment so this gold this myrrh this frankincense was able to help mary and joseph because remember they were giving birth to jesus in the manger in the inn because they they, they, they couldn't afford it they were not well off okay but these treasures that were given by the magi which were the destiny helpers help them help jesus further the kingdom of God. Now, King Herod finds out that they had tricked him because God comes to the Magi in a dream and tells them, listen, don't go back. Do not go back. Don't tell King Herod anything. So the best thing with destiny killers is that they should not get any information from you. They should get minimal information from you. Because the more information they have about you, the more they can use to destroy you. Okay? And the Magi get that warning and they go a different way. King Herod finds out that, in fact, he was tricked. And what does he do? He kills all the babies, the, the boys that were under two in that region, in Bethlehem. Horrible. But that, that is the extent. That is the extent that destiny killers will go to destroy a person. To destroy a destiny. Okay, so for you guys, if you have had the dreams where you know somebody stole your star, they stole your destiny, they usually do this at midnight. Midnight hour is when these things happen. Get up at midnight and ask God for a reversal. Demand a reversal, sevenfold reversal. Proverbs 6, verse 31. Sevenfold reversal. Okay. 